In this short video, I'm going to show you how to work with the items collection inside of an Outlook folder. If you've been following this series, then you're already familiar with folders and mail items. The items collection is useful because it allows you to work with a group of messages instead of just a single message, which is what we've done up to this point. As always, check the video description for relevant links that I mention in the video. I'm going to be using the Ideally Interactive Python shell, which comes packaged with Python. If you want to use the same, just type in IDLE in your command prompt. Otherwise, you can follow along with any code editor or IDE you wish. So without further ado, let's get started. By now, you should be used to the routine, so go ahead and import Win32.com and start up an instance of Outlook. We're going to create a namespace object so that we can access the folders. We'll use the git default folder method to access the drafts folder, which has code 16. The items property is a collection of Outlook objects such as appointments, contacts, or messages. And similar to the folders collection, the items collection has a count property, which shows how many items are contained within the collection. The methods we learned in the last video for indexing a folder collection are identical to what you'll use to access the mail items in the items collection. The mail items in the items collection are the same type of object you've already worked with in previous videos when you created and sent mail. And once you have the item, you can access any of its properties and methods. And you can change any of these attributes as well. So let's say I want to give this message a new body. Just type in message.body. Use the display method to see the message and your changes. Use the save method to save the message. Or you can delete the message with the delete method. Okay, let's grab another message. You can copy the message using the copy method. In fact, let's go ahead and create a bunch of copies just for the sake of it. And of course, you can also use the send method. Similar to folders, you can access mail items through iteration. For example, for message in drafts.items, print message.subject. Since we're in the drafts folder, you may be tempted to use this iteration method to send messages. However, you may remember it's never a good idea to change an iterable that you're iterating over. The index of messages within the items property will change when you send, create, or delete a message. So to handle this, you first get a static reference to the collection, and then you can perform any action you wish on that static reference. For example, I'm going to create a Python list from the items in the drafts folder. Now I can iterate over this list and perform the actions I want. However, first let's do something a bit different. Let's create this list again, but this time let's apply a filter. You may not want to touch every message in the folder, for example, Let's say that I only want to send messages with the name Python in the subject line. I can iterate with a list comprehension to easily get a list of relevant mail items. I use the lower string method here so that the filter becomes case insensitive. Now you can send or delete, if that's what you want to do, the items that you want to send or delete. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to use another bulk mail method that utilizes the folder and items collections that we've learned in the last few videos. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for future content. See you in the next video.